Hello, today on the Beam channel, I'd like to talk about behaviors. But before that, I'd like to state that if you or your team would like help getting up to speed in Erlang or Elixir, please give me a call. I do training courses and I am happy to bring one to your company pretty much anywhere in the world. Erlang and Elixir feature the concept of a behavior. And you can spell it, by the way, in both the American and the British style, depending on what part of the world you're in. A behavior is basically similar to an interface in Java. It is a way of saying that this module should conform to certain parameters. For example, gen server is a behavior, supervisor's behavior, and those can be predefined, but you can create your own as well. So to create your own, you create a module, and then you, for in the example, there's one called parser, parser and the documentation looks like this, and you give it a set of callbacks, and they're done with the at sign in Elixir with a dash in Erlang, and you list them, app, and then in the application that's using them, you simply say behavior, name of the behavior module, and the compiler will check that the two match. The general use for this is you simply say, okay, I want to be able to assert that this module, which includes some generic functionality, calls this module, which may implement the specific functionality. So maybe you have a user behavior, which implements you know, three different kinds of users or something like that, and that you want to treat them differently, but you want them to have the same API. So it's basically just a way of saying, this is a standard API to deal with this kind of thing. So again, you, you define it with the Erlang type language, like this then you um, use it in another thing like that. And if you don't, in another module, and if you don't define everything, you will get an error message. In some cases, that's fine, you can leave it. In Elixir, you can actually also tell it to, to use a default module, which is sort of behind the scope of this. But you know, for example, the Elixir example gives you a parser. So we have a standard interface for parsers, one, and you have you know, a JSON parser, a YAML parser, an XML parser, a, you know, some other form of parser, I don't know, CSV. But they're all going to have the same API and you can sort of use them interchangeably in that set of definitions from the compiler. This is important in OTP because OTP uses behaviors very extensively to define all sorts of things. So as you're moving around the Erlang space, you'll see a lot of behaviors. And sometimes it's nice to know you can actually define your own if you have a reason to. All right, I hope that was useful. If you was, please like and subscribe below. I'd be appreciative if you would share this on social media. And if you have some questions or suggestions, please be in touch.